Hi, welcome to this tutorial on finding medians, quartiles, percentiles from a group frequency table. Now what I'm going to show you is a dead easy method of doing this. Okay, now for instance if you've got a group frequency table, something like this say, and you've got your intervals 10 to 20. What this means is that we've got four values which are greater than or equal to 10 but less than 20. Eight values which are greater than or equal to 20 but less than 25 and so on. Now in order to find quartiles, medians, percentiles etc what you need to do is construct a commutative frequency column. Let me just explain something like this okay commutative frequency gives us how many values are less than a particular value and we're going to look at the values at the ends of these classes so in other words we've got four values which are less than 20 we've got a total of 12 values now 8 and 4 which are less than 25 so just put 12 and less than 25 you don't need to put these values less than here because that's what commutative frequency means I'm just putting them in there just as a reminder and if we carry on we've got now with this 5 17 values which are less than the 35 and finally with these three we've got a total of 20 values which are less than 50. All right. So just a short column here just so we can get through this quite quickly. Now to work out quartiles, medians, whatever I'm going to work off something like this. I'm going to draw a line as you'll see in a moment in a couple of examples. This line is going to represent one of these class intervals and when we have the class interval that our value like the median is going to be in I'm going to mark in the lower bound for that interval here and the upper bound here so this interval might be 20 to 25 so I'd have 20 here and 25 here and then below these two values I'm going to put the cumulative frequency in other words how many values are less than this lower bound well I'll call that the lower frequency LF and I'm going to put here underneath this value the upper frequency right and what we're going to be doing is then putting in the value that we want to find so if it was a quartile I would put a Q here. If it was a percentile I'd put a P here. And below this value I'm going to put the commutative frequency that this value is going to be at. You'll see this in a moment anyway and hopefully it will become clear. But this is the easy bit. What we're going to do is compare intervals. I'm going to compare this interval with a similar interval on the bottom this one here and that comparison is going to be exactly the same as comparing this interval with this one through here okay now I've color coded it so we can use these colors to see what I'm doing so without further ado let's get on and work out say an estimate for the median so if we're asked to estimate the median we often call that the second quartile and that's given by Q2 normally and what position would that be in now as far as our frequency goes we've got a total of 20 values the 20 here 20 values are less than 50 so where can we expect the median with continuous data with continuous data all I've got to do for 20 values is literally find half of 0 0.5 because the medians in the middle of the 20 values and that's going to be the tenth value so the question is where is that tenth value going to be well 
we can see that the tenth value is going to be in the interval 20 to 25. So I'd mark up my interval, my class interval, 20 to 25. So I've got my lower bound, my upper bound, as I had up here. Now how many values are below 20? Well we can see that there are four values below 20. So I put a 4 here. And how many values are below 25? Well you can see that there'll be 12. And we want the tenth value in. So where would the tenth value be? Well it's going to clearly be more up this end, okay, towards the twelfth value in. So I'll just put a line here. So I want the tenth value and that tenth value is Q2. So all I need to do now is just use this diagram. I'm going to compare this width first of all that corresponds to that solid red line. That width in this case would be Q2 minus 20. So we put Q2 minus 20. We would compare it with, that's to divide, with the interval below. And that would be 10 minus 4. And then that's going to be equal to comparing this solid green width here, the upper bound minus the lower bound, 25 take away 20, and compare that with the width below, 12 minus 4. And there's your equation. All you've got to do now is just rearrange this. So if we wanted to work out what Q2 was, I'm going to cut out a few steps here, what we've got is 25 take away 20 which is going to be 5 divided by 12 take away 4 which is 8 we've got over here 10 take away 4 which is 6 so I'd multiply by 6 and then I would add that 20 and if you work that out what you're going to get is 23.75 and if you look up here you should find that yeah looks pretty good it's close to the 25 feels right there's our estimate, 23.75 then for the median. Now it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it be a lower quartile, upper quartile, or even a percentile, it's still the same method. We've just got to locate the position, which class interval it's in, set up a diagram like this, do our comparison, and we should be able to get the result. We'll do another example. Now I'm going to choose a percentile, so I'll just write it in here, percentile. Let's say we choose P80, the 80th percentile. Just whilst we're here though, the median could be regarded as the 50th percentile. Percentile, 50% halfway through. So we're looking at 80% here of the way through. All right? Anyway, pause the video if you'd like to give this a go and come back when ready and I'll just run through this with you. Okay, let's see how you might have got on if you gave it a go. Okay, so we're trying to get P80. So we need to know the position of the 80th value. So, I say the 80th value, so 80% of the way in, which is 0 0.8. 0 0.8 of the 20 values we've got here, which is 16. We're looking for the 16th value. So, where am I going to find that? Well, the 16th value has got to be in this interval, 25 to 35. So I draw my interval, put my 25 35 on the ends here. And what about the frequencies? How many values are lower than 25? 12. How many values are lower than 35? 17. I want the 16th value in, so it's going to be 
up here towards the 17th value. And that's going to be labelled P80 for the 80th percentile. So again, just set up my equation, just like this diagram shows us. This width here, P80, let's just put it there, P80 minus the 25, compared with corresponding width below, 16 take away 12. It equals, then I do the whole width, 35 minus 25, and compare that with the corresponding width below, 17 take away 12. So there's my equation. All I need to do is just rearrange it for that 80th percentile, P80. So 35 take away 25 is 10, over 17 take away 12, which is 5. 16 take away 12 is 4, so times both sides by 4, and then finally add the 25. And what have you got? Well, you've got 33. Just quickly glance at the diagram, see if it looks reasonable. It certainly does. It's less than 35, quite close to the 35. Good. OK, so hopefully you can use this method all the time. If it was the upper quartile, you're looking at P75. OK, three quarters the way in. If it's the lower quartile, Q1 or P25, quarter the way in. All right, same system all the time. OK, well, thanks for listening, and I hope that's been of some use to you.